to the Word of God. It's good to be here tonight. Praise Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Tonight, I'm going to start off with a song that says, You've Already Won. Terry, if you'll go ahead and put it on. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Turn it up.
and who will go for us? And he yes. said, here am I. Yes. Send me. Tonight, God's looking for some people that will go out there and share this gospel tonight. Because hell is real tonight. There is a real little hell. Sister Luke preached on that this morning. If you didn't get the message, go back and listen to it. But every one of us, I think just about we're in the sanctuary. Hell is a real place. And it's a place of torment. That's right. It's a place of suffering, and nobody should go there. Right. You wouldn't want your worst enemy to end up in that place. That's Hallelujah. Right. And God is looking for some people tonight that will go out and share this gospel because it's getting ready to wrap up. Yes, it's getting ready to yeah, come, come to come God's fixing Preach to come it. back. He's fixing to come back for the church, and it's going to yes, be oh so is. much worse and so much harder. There will be those that will be saved during that time, during the time of tribulation. But if you're not going to serve him now, I'm not so That's sure right. you'll serve him then either. Hallelujah. Today's the day of salvation. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. The name Isaiah can be understood to mean Yahweh is salvation or Yahweh saves. Isaiah was one of the major prophets of the Old Testament. As a matter of fact, he was one of the most quoted prophets in the New Testament, more than any of the other prophets that were out there. He's known for his prophecies about the coming Messiah, God's plan for Israel, and messages of hope and restoration. There are 66 books in our Bible. There are 66 books in the, in the there are 66 chapters in the book of Isaiah. There are uh, 39 Old Testament, and that's law. There are 27 books in the Bible. And that's, we're under grace. Amen? Amen. Amen? When you get to Isaiah's earlier writings, the first 39 chapters warned Israel and Judah about destruction and captivity that would come because of their sins. But when you get to that chapter 40, the first word you see is comfort. And comfort God. ye, my and people. God. Hallelujah. God didn't leave his people alone. Yes, yes there's... We're, you know, we're caught up in this world and, and we fall away. But God says, I haven't left you. I haven't left That's you right. without a plan That's and a right. promise of a way to get back to me. If you'll just turn from your sins tonight. If you'll just look to me tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The last, the later prophecies, the last 27 chapters that were meant to cover the Jews over 150 years in the future. After Jerusalem was destroyed, the temple was desecrated and the people were taken captive by Babylon. But these prophecies, they also reach further into the future. Yeah. They reach all the way to the cross of yes. Calvary. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And they reach all the way to the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Jesus was that sacrificial lamb that was needed to accomplish what was needed for our sin that was provided. Isaiah's message to them and to us is simple today. Fear not. Yes. Fear not. Yes. We're not left here without a way to get back to him tonight. Yes. Amen. We don't have to fear what we see happening in this world tonight. Yes. If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you have called on his name, you don't have to fear what you see happening up there in the White House tonight. Amen. You don't have to fear our government and what's going on because you know in whom you have believed in and whom you have served tonight. Hallelujah. Yes, amen. Isaiah 43 and 1 through 7 says, Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by name. Thou art mine. God says, Thou art mine. This was while they were still in their sins, before captivity, before their exile. Amen. Romans 8, 5, 8 says to us, But God commandeth his love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yes. While he was on that cross yes. that day, he looked ahead in time, Crystal, and he saw that you would need him. And he said, It is finished for you, daughter. Hallelujah. He provided a way for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Isaiah continues. He says, when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And when you go through the rivers, they will not overflow you tonight. When you walk through the fire, you're not going to be burned. And you're not going to be touched by the fire from the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. 
This was to Israel and to everyone who's called by the name of the Lord. Amen. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. How many of you know the story? Yes. We should be pretty familiar with that story. And we know that King Nebuchadnezzar would build a, a, a statue of gold and he would ask everybody to come and to bow down to this statue, but not Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They knew in whom they had believed in. And they weren't bowing to any other gods because they knew that he was the God of all gods. Amen. Hallelujah. Have you made up your mind tonight? Do you know the God of heaven? Do you know the soon coming king tonight? Hallelujah. Glory to God. knew because it's fixing to come down to us. Will you serve me tonight or will you bow? Will you serve me tonight or will you bow, Cindy? Hallelujah. We you know the story goes on that he had turned up the, the fire seven times hotter and that the men that would go to throw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fire were burned up. But when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in that fire, you would see them walking around with the fourth man that was in the fire. Hallelujah. And not even a hair That's on their right. head was seen, right. Brother Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When you walk through the fire, you the flame won't even touch you tonight when Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. All is not lost, child. The Lord has not forgotten you. Somebody needs to hear this. He has power over your situation, and he is in control. If you will but look to him tonight, if you will but trust him tonight, trust him with your life, Ariana, trust him with your life. Let him be the, the Lord of your life. Let him be the one that you seek with everything inside of you. Don't look to the left and to the right because everybody this tonight. God's in the house tonight. Yeah, Glory yeah, to God. Yeah. Woo, hallelujah. Yeah, Isaiah yeah. 42 and 5 says, is it the Lord? He that created the heavens and he that spread forth the earth and he that giveth breath unto the people. Yeah. He is the one that breathed into Adam a lifeless form that was yeah. made out of clay and lay there. But it wasn't until he breathed that breath of God that life came yeah. into that body. Hallelujah. God is breathing on his people still today. And he is flowing across this land for anybody that will say, yes, Lord, come on in. Yes, Lord, come on in. I need you. Because you know without the breath of God breathing on these bodies, you are dead. That's right. You are dead. Hallelujah. Right. You need the, love, the spirit of God to live inside of these bodies to bring life eternal to your soul. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God was saying to Israel and he's saying to us, isn't he more powerful than Babylon, than sin, than whatever is holding you captive? Return unto me. Return unto me, he pleads, for I have redeemed thee. Isaiah 44 and 22 says, I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions, and as a cloud thy sins. Return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Verse 2 says, Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned. God is saying, Speak to the heart of my people. Tell them, cry unto them tonight. Tell them that I am there for them, that I am going to be with you all the way to the very end. I haven't let you cry to the heart of my people. I made a way, hallelujah. The way is narrow, but I have made a way. It's the cross of Calvary. There is no other way. He said, cry, cry, cry aloud, people. He said, cry and tell them that I love them. Yes. You see, true comfort only comes and it's only found in the message of the cross of Calvary. And what Jesus did for you and me, paying your sin debt, a debt, he didn't owe. He did not owe the debt. He was sinless. He was without spot. He was a lamb that was pure and holy that paid your sin debt. He paid for you, Cheyenne, on the cross of Calvary so that you could live, so that you could be free, so that you could have a choice. Yes, amen. He says, will you choose me today above everybody else in your life? Will you make me Lord of your life, of everything that you are? Hallelujah. He's asking every one of you today. Daniela, he's asking that of you today. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. Sister Heidi, he says, will you follow me with all of your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength? Will you put me above everybody else, your family, your children? Will, will you come to me and serve me with everything? He's saying that to every yes. single person yes. that's here tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Verse 2 goes on to say, She has received of the Lord's hand double for all of her sins. Isaiah 61, <coughs> 7 says, For your shame you shall have double. And for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in their land they shall possess the double. Somebody say possess the double tonight. Double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. Hallelujah. Double here means to fold in half. We see this same word in the Hebrew that was used in Exodus 26 and 9 that says, And shalt double the sixth curtain in the forefront of the tabernacle. So everybody say fold in half. Double means to fold in half in these scriptures. Hallelujah. If a Jew would go bankrupt, he would have to, this was a custom back in the, in the days, he would have to go and he would have to list up all of his debts. He would have to make a list of all of his debts. And then he would have to go and find a place where it was visible for everybody to see. And he would have to nail his debt up there so everybody could see. And it was all exposed. It was in front of everybody. And then maybe a benefactor would come along and they would see the debt and they would graciously decide, I'll pay the debt for him. This was their custom. And so he would take that down and he would fold it in half. He would cover it up. And then he would take that piece of paper and he would nail it back so everybody else could see that his name was written across the top of it. He would write his name he would write his name in place of the man that owed all of that debt. He would fold it over so it can't be seen by nobody. So when somebody would come by, a creditor, and he was needed his payment, he would see that name that was written. He would see the name that had been written, and he would go to him for the payment of that debt. Somebody say, to possess the double. You see, when Jesus died on the cross, he took the penalty for all of our sins upon himself and then doubled over the account, meaning the sins can no longer be seen because they are gone. And he wrote his name on the front, meaning that he paid the price for our sins. He wrote his name in blood. He wrote his name in red. His blood was enough. Hallelujah. What he did on the cross of Calvary, he wiped our debt away. It was accomplished. It was done away with. It wasn't a temporary fix like in days of old when they would have to go each year and the priest would have to go in with a chain on his foot because he was afraid. He was afraid, Crystal, that he might die because he was going into the Holy of Holies. But now the way has been made for you and I, and we can enter in. Right. We can come yes. and confidently asking for mercy and grace, whatever we need, by the blood of the Lamb Amen. that was shed for you and me. Hallelujah. Colossians 2.14 says, Blotting out the handwriting of ordinance, the laws that was against us, which was contrary to us, and it took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross, nailing it to the cross. When the enemy comes at you with your past, and you can say, no, 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 devil. I want you to read the scriptures. It is written. Colossians 2.14 says that the handwriting, the ordinance, the laws that was against me. Hallelujah. It, it was taken away. It was nailed to the cross by the blood. Amen. By Jesus. He took the nails for us, y'all. He took the nails for each one of us. Do you really grasp what he did for us on the cross of Calvary? Do you really grasp that you've been forgiven tonight of a debt that you could not pay? We're all sinners. Every one of us. Every one of us. We're all guilty. But there's none righteous. No, not one. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And all who will call on his name, all who will call on his name shall be saved. So we can also say, even though we're Gentiles, that through Christ and what he did on the cross, that we possess 
the double tonight. Hallelujah. Verse 3, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. This was fulfilled when John the Baptist cried in the wilderness saying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. John 1, 21 through 22. This is also going to be fulfilled by the prophet Elijah just before the second coming of the Lord. Now the second coming is not the rapture. They're two different events. God is fixing to come back and take the church home. And then there's going to be a terrible time of tribulation. There's going to be greater tribulation on this earth than you've ever seen before. And that's when Elijah will come back. He will come back in the last three and a half years. And he will once again cry out saying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. There will be those that give their lives to, to the Lord during that time. But I would want to be left when you read the book of Revelation. If you think for one moment it's going to be an easy time, it's going to be the hardest time. You're going to have to take a mark in your hand or in your forehead. You think it's getting hard now to buy, to sell? You think it's hard now? Look at the inflation. Look at how the prices have just soared. It's becoming harder and harder. The almighty dollar is fixing to go away. They're trying to make it a one world government already. It's hard now, we think so, but it's nothing compared to what it's going to be. That's right. Today's the day of salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Malachi 4 and 5 says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Verse 6 says, Elijah will turn the hearts of the father to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers. This talks of the patriarchs and the prophets of old. Verse 6 goes on to say, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. There's no word following this word curse in the last part of the old covenant, meaning there's more to follow. Amen. The word amen is the last word in the book of Revelation, which means so be it. This closes out the canon of scripture because after grace, which is the theme of ministry of Christ, there is nothing left to be said but amen. The world was not left with a curse, amen, but Jesus Christ came and he redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. Galatians 3 and 13. Aren't you glad that you've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb of the cross? Yes, amen. amen. <laughs> Verse 4 says, Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. Yes. James 4, 10 says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Yes, when Christ comes the second time, every valley in the world that's filled with its hurting, is filled with those that are weeping will at that time be exalted. Every person that is humble, every person that is lowly in spirit, every person that has not turned their backs on the Lord Jesus Christ will be exalted. The mountains, the hills, they represent the oppressors, those who are full of pride and arrogance of the world. They're going to be brought down from their exalted position and they <coughs> shall be made low. Every person that is out there, they're not going to get away with what they're doing. Right. You in here tonight will not get away with what you're doing. If you don't call on the name of the Lord, if you don't surrender when he tells you to do something, give something up. Some of you sitting on the fence tonight and God says it's time. Today is the day of salvation. Today is to make your decision. Who you will say, who you will serve. It's either me or Bell today. It's either Jesus Christ or it is Bell. He says choose today. You don't have time to sit on the fence anymore. It's time that he's fixing to come back. It's getting closer and closer. I wouldn't want to be sitting on the fence right now. I want to get so close to God that I feel him inside my bones. Like Crystal was saying, I got a feeling for myself. I got a knowing for myself. I want that fire inside. Hallelujah tonight. Glory to God. Yes, amen. Glory to God. Amen. Only Jesus Christ can make the crooked straight and the rough places plain. And that he shall do. There's coming a day soon when those who are full of pride and arrogance saying they have no need of God. There is no God. They will soon be brought low. Yes, yes. 
right. Verse 5, the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. The glory of the Lord is Jesus Christ. At the second coming, all flesh shall see it together. Philippians 2.10 through 11. We should know this verse well. It says that one day every knee's going to bow. And one day every tongue's going to confess. All things in heaven and all things in the earth, the things that are underneath the earth, every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, the put to the glory Hallelujah. of God the Father. The message is still the same, Sister Luke. It has not changed. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Repent and be baptized. The Lord is soon returning. Today is the day of salvation. Verse 6 through 8 says, Cry. All flesh is grass, and all the goodliness thereof is as a flower of the field. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth. Because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it, surely the people is grass. Psalms 8, 4 through 6 says, What is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visitest him, for thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and thou crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, amen. Hallelujah. We are here today and gone tomorrow. The scripture says, For what shall it profit a man if he gains his whole world? And yet he loses his soul. That's right. What does it profit you tonight? All the wealth, all the riches in this world. Brother Claude just said it this morning. There's nothing in this world. There's nothing materialistic that you can take with you. Naked I came into this world and naked I will go out. There is but one thing that you can take with you when you leave out of this world. Hallelujah. And it's what is on the inside. Not just what's on the inside. It's who's on the inside. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Verse 8 goes on to say, but the word of God shall stand forever. God's faithfulness, everything that God says in his word shall come to pass. The prophet Jeremiah said in chapter 1 and 12 that God says, I will hasten. That word hasten means to speedily do it sooner rather than later. My word to perform it, which means that word perform is execute, to accomplish it. He will do everything that he said he will do in this book right here from the beginning all the way to the very end where it says, Amen, so be it. Amen, glory to God. Hallelujah. Everything shall be accomplished. John 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Everything that was, is, and is to come, has been, is being, and will be, will be executed and accomplished by Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, our soon coming King. Everything. Hallelujah. He's worthy tonight. He's worthy tonight. Yeah. Lord, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our foundational warfare is what I've been talking about tonight. Don't confuse it with spiritual warfare because that's what the Christian faces. The foundation is what Jesus already accomplished for us. It's already been won. Everybody's going to go through something. We're going to go through trials and tribulations. Hallelujah. Every Christian will face spiritual warfare. But when you get saved, when you, you do that, you do it by faith. That's yes. not something you have to fight for. Right. That's not something you have to beg and plead for and get yourself all cleaned up. It's already been done. The battle's already been won. You just have to accept him by faith. Yes. That's the only way you can do yes. this thing. That's why people struggle so much because they're fighting a battle that's already been won. Right. Amen. You're, you're still trying to get rid of those past things. You see, that's how the enemy keeps... Uh, the Christian down. That's how he keeps us down, Brother Claude, because we're, we're still fighting for these things that God says, I don't remember. I don't know what you're talking about. I've done thrown those things as far as the east into the west. I don't even know if I went the right way, but you know what I mean tonight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. He done thrown them things out of here. I don't know what you're talking about. If God knew who I was, whoo. Glory to God, praise God. You don't know who I was because he don't even remember that girl no more. Hallelujah. Now I'm the daughter of the Most High God. Hallelujah. I have a blessing in favor of the Most High God. Glory to God. 
and the daughter of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is how the enemy keeps people, Sister Luke, from going forward, from receiving the baptism in the Holy Ghost. That, that's already been won for y'all. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the next thing is just to open up your heart and receive. Just open up your heart and receive. There's nothing you can do. That's the next thing that comes. Hallelujah. And, and I want to encourage somebody tonight to keep seeking the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Because you're going to need him tonight to be able to stand in this last day. You're going to need right. him. You can't make it in these last days without him. you got to right. have him. That's the power. That's how we overcome. It's through the Holy Ghost. The third person of the Trinity. Hallelujah. He is God. The Father is God. Jesus is God. Holy Ghost is God. They are not gods. They are three. Yet they are one God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus is the only one who was found worthy to accomplish the fulfill the just payment that was needed for our sin debt over 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary. Revelations 5, 1 through 10 says, The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed. He's the only one that was worthy. Verse 9 and 10 says, For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and hast made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on earth we shall reign with Christ in the millennial reign of Christ this is at the second coming don't confuse I told Sister Lou she was going to have to come back and explain some things to y'all but I'm telling you what these scriptures take us all the way through to Calvary right on to the millennial reign of Christ yeah. everything that Isaiah prophesied is going to come to pass hallelujah Amen. everything that he spoke of Everything that he talked about, God shared it with us in his word. Jesus, the lion of the tribe of Judah, he's triumphed victoriously. He has triumphed over death, hell, and the grave, over all temptation and sin, over pain and suffering, over fear, and yes, even Satan, <coughs> the devil. Jesus is the lion that retreats before nothing. Amen. Did y'all hear that? Amen. Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And he retreats before nothing. Hallelujah. Through him we are victorious. Be reminded tonight somebody needs to hear this because the enemy has been coming after. And he's been trying to break us down. He's been trying to place a spirit of discouragement upon God's people. But if we will grasp hold of who it is that we possess on the inside, yeah. it's that same spirit yeah. that rise. Jesus Christ, that yeah. raised Jesus Christ from the dead. He lives on the inside yeah. of you and me, those who are saved. That resurrection power, it lives on the inside of us. Amen. And we have a responsibility. The reason why there's such a discouragement and a spirit that the enemy is trying to place on God's people is because of what we possess. Amen. Because you hold what those out there need. That's right. That's right. Your family, Amen. they need Jesus. That's right. you, you've got the gospel, Sister Disher, on the inside of you. Right. The enemy wants to isolate us. Yeah. Come on. He wants to make us think we're the ones that are wrong. Yeah. He wants to uh, hinder our prayer life. He wants to keep us praying and think there's nothing you can do. But, but that's the greatest thing, Sister Luke, that we can do is we can pray for our loved ones. We can intercede for their souls tonight. That's right. Amen. Yes. Glory to God. we got to share the gospel at whatever cost tonight. Hallelujah. That's Isaiah 40 and 31 says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk, not faint. Remember, our warfare has been accomplished by Jesus, the Lion, the tribe of Judah, the Lamb of God. Stand to your feet tonight. My ask Sister Judy and the worship team, if y'all would come up here tonight. I want to end a little bit different tonight. 
I wanted to end with worship tonight. This call tonight is to, first and foremost, to those who need salvation, those who don't know the Lord. If you are here tonight, I open up these altars to you tonight. Somebody will pray with you. I'm not going to pull you out of your seat. I'm not going to ask you to make you have to come down. But don't leave out of here tonight if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior tonight. If you not made him Savior tonight, don't leave out of here. It's wrapping up. Won't be long. We'll be going home. If you have backslidden, you're not where you need to be tonight, I want to give this altar call to you tonight. To everyone that's here tonight, if you are in a place tonight and you know in your heart that you're not where you need to be with God, I ask you to come and get around these altars tonight and rededicate your life. Ministers of the gospel, leaders, teachers, laypersons, this call is to y'all tonight. The Lord said to Isaiah in 6, 8, he asked, who will go for me? You carry the gospel. Some of you have been called by God. You've been commissioned by God. And I'm asking every minister, even our pastor, to come tonight and to recommit to what God has put on the inside of you. To carry the gospel, the good news. This is good news tonight. This is the greatest comfort that you can take to the world tonight. Hallelujah. The song I've asked Sister Judy to sing as we come and gather around these altars tonight is, You Are Holy. Isaiah 6, 1 through 3 says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he... He did fly and he cried unto another and he said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of your glory. Yes. The altars yes. are open tonight. Hallelujah.